Hi, I'm Raina Morgan with Eye Health Chief, visiting with Dr. Ellie Rappaport, and we're talking about ATP and energy, the universal source of energy, as you say, and, and what we would like to tell the viewers about is how does ATP affect aging? What are the consequences of ATP and aging? Well, Rena, it's now known that uh, the co a causal for aging is the reduction in uh, mitochondrial ATP synthesis in skeletal muscle. And uh, since the beginning of times, the holy grail of uh, both the pharmaceutical and the nutritional supplement industry has been to produce agents that would be able to help aging. And by helping aging, there are several factors. One factor is skeletal muscle function. And the other factor is glycemic control. Uh, ironically, as I have explained, ATP fulfills these two functions. It does stimulate skeletal muscle function by enhancing the disposal of glucose into skeletal muscle, and it does stimulate glycemic control by uh, interacting with or enhancing the interaction with, of uh, insulin with its insulin receptor and enhancing the, res the expression of GLUT4, which is the major glucose transporter. I ought to say here that glucose transport into skeletal muscle is not dis diffusional. In other words, there is an active transporter. This is the GLUT4 that I've the been talking four. about. Okay. That is the major transporter. It's gra it grabs the sugar molecules and okay. pushes them into the cell. Now the now, what uh, happens as we age? Don't we lose some of that energy? We do, of course we do, but we are never will never be able to substitute the loss that you mentioned. Really? The loss, but what we can do is we can enhance the, stim the we can enhance the intracellular energy synthesis by affecting what's happening outside. In other words, the amount of ATP inside simply too high to be replaced. However, the amount of ATP extracellularly is very, very low. For instance, let me give you an example. In total blood, there is about three grams of ATP inside red blood cells, which are total blood. The other cells comprise just a small amount. But extracellularly, there is one thousandth to one ten thousandth of the amount of ATP intracellularly, namely about two milligrams of le or less. Okay. Now, peak ATP, which is the branded ATP of TSI, contains 125 up to 200 or 250 milligrams of ATP. And this so, is a viable oral form and this of... is a viable oral formulation Okay. that is expanding the blood plasma of ATP. Okay, and didn't you say that um, when we're 20, uh, by the time we've turned that 70, it has re been reduced by 50% ATP? That is correct, not only from 20, from the age of 35, 38 to the age of 30, 68 to 70, the amount of ATP in the blood and in skeletal muscle has been reduced by 50 percent. By 50 percent. This is the intracellular level, which is also the extracellular level. And I'll just give you two examples how okay. this affect aging. One is what we have been talking about, the ability of ATP to expand the blood vessel diameter. As we age, we lose this ability because we lose our ATP. All right. In other words, we get, instead of getting hypotension or reduction in blood pressure or reduction in systemic vascular resistance, we get hypertension. We get a narrowing of the blood vessel. The other, the other point that we have been discussing that also exists in aging is the lack of glycemic control. 
the lack of glycemic control doesn't only so is not only associated with uh, type 2 diabetes or insulin insensitivity, but also simply with aging. Okay. The more we age, the less we have the ability to clear up the ah. glucose from the blood. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Rappaport. We would like to talk again about aging. Thanks so much.